Jesus delighted in the knowledge that one day we would grow up to become his habitation, that he could come and dwell and abide in us. I have called you friends for all things that I've heard of my Father I make known to you. He anticipated you being a man of prayer, a woman of prayer, and that he in quiet times could give you the secret of his heart. He would open this word to you. You would see things that nobody else saw or heard. He would speak life to you. This was why he delighted, I'm going to have a people. I'm going to have a bosom friend in my bride, someone I can talk to, someone I can share the burden of my heart with. His secret is with the righteous, the scripture says. He anticipated a love relationship with you so intimately. He rejoiced in the anticipation of his bride delighting in his word. David himself in Psalms 118, 19 describes what those gates are. Open to me the gates of righteousness. And this is the believer. This is the child of God who goes daily to the word of God anxiously getting the word of the Lord on how to walk in righteousness and holiness. This is the one who says, I want to walk before the Lord with a pure heart. I want truth in the inner man. And I can't get it from somebody else. I can't get it from books and tapes. Oh God, I go to your word and I wait at your gate, at the gate of righteousness. I wait for you to open that gate to me. And folks, that's the reason we beg and plead with you. Read this book daily because this is the gate of righteousness. This is the gate. Here's Jesus rejoicing before the world was made, rejoicing and delighting over what he anticipates. He's looking into the future, to the latter days. He anticipates coming to his habitation. So tell me, now that you know that Jesus anticipated before you were born, you have time for shopping, you have time for gardening, you have time for everything, and you have no time for God. You have no time for the bridegroom. And he anticipated this for eons. This was his delight before the world was created. He looked forward and longed for that time with you. I'm not talking about going to church and listening to sermons. This is about people who are falling so short of what God had planned for their life. They've missed it. He had it in his mind to draw you so close to himself. He had it in his mind to have such sweet fellowship with you to open his heart to fill you with the knowledge of himself. He had so many things he wanted to show you. He wanted you to be so in love with him that you couldn't endure a day without being shut in with him. He wanted to take away your weaknesses, your fears, your feelings of inadequacy, your rejection. He wanted to teach you how to know and hear his voice. Now I'm going to bring a solemn warning now. And folks, I am trembling. Jesus will not abide in a temple that ignores him that neglects him. Absolutely impossible. When, when you don't go to your Bible day after day, week after week, when you don't seek the face of God, nobody sees you through the week except by here in prayer. You may come to all the meetings. You come to the meetings and, and that's it. That's it. But you have no personal relationship in private. You have no time for him in private. If you don't hear what I'm about to tell you, all your work's going to burn when you stand before Christ. All your work's going to be you're going to stand empty, fruitless, nothing to bring to the Master. And all of that anticipation he had, all that great desire toward you, you've aborted. Now let me tell you, it's never too late to start over. Never. Lord, before this day is over, I'm going to get alone with you. And I'm going to rehearse this truth in my heart. That I tremble at God's word. God hit my soul. God dealt with me. And I receive it. In this chapter that chills me to the bone. Chills me to the bone. It's shaken me to the core of my soul. And if you'd ask him where, where did this divine order came from, he, would just, he wouldn't point to his half million man army. He wouldn't point to all the buildings he'd built and all the walls he'd built and all of the inventions that he had invented. He wouldn't point to any of that or of his own ability. He would say, the secret is, I go to my closet and I pray. I seek God 
And in prayer, He tells me what to do, where to go, and He gives me promises. That's all there is, no other secret than that. Now, why would God send a prophet with a warning to a man who's just won the greatest victory in his career, in his life? And God understands the danger of those who love Him, those who are holy, those who are godly, the danger of becoming weary and relaxing and becoming spiritually lazy after the greatest victories. He's a... I bring a word from God's throne to you. Be diligent now. Be diligent more than you've ever... You're going to need God more than you've ever needed Him now. You've had a great victory. God has blessed you. God has blessed you so, but now you're going to need it. You're going to be tested like you've never been tested in your life. Now, God wants to reward you. God has plans for you. Be careful lest you get so busy unless you get to building and into projects unless your family unless your ministry unless other things come in and track you and take your time the anointing will lift the favor will lift the divine order will be gone you'll just be like every other generation that has failed lost their faith and when he's 70 years of age God came to George Mueller and said, You've been a man of prayer, but now I want you to pray more than you've ever prayed because I've got something else. I've got something for your last days. At 70 years of age, this man renewed his prayer life. This man sought God as he never sought Him. Even at 95, he was still preaching. He traveled for 25 years around the world and stirred and changed the lives of thousands of ministers because he stayed on his face. He didn't miss out. He didn't lose his faith. He didn't lose his anointing because he stayed on his face before God. And yet I can tell you the story after story of men of God who've been used, who had anointing, who were blessed of God, who were men of prayer, who were prophets. And in their older age, in their mid-sixties, and in their seventies, and I've been with some of them. And all I hear are stories of old-time religion or old revivals, and there's no new word because the man is sitting in front of a TV set now. He doesn't set my soul on fire. I don't want my children, my grandchildren, who love to hear me pray, who love to hear the voice of God through my lips, I don't ever want my children to see the grief and shame of me sitting in front of a television all day, never opening my Bible, not seeking God, saying, what happened to Dad? God, keep me broken. God, keep this church broken. God, don't let us sit back on a crest of blessing and get lazy and see this order come again to this house. We don't want to stand and sermonize in this pulpit. We don't just want crowds. We want your glory in this house, oh God. We want your glory in your power. Oh God, I tremble at your word. Let us tremble this morning that it's possible for godly men and godly women who once prayed, who once had such an anointing to finally lose it. In this day of temptation when all hell is breaking loose, God help us determine I will seek God. I will seek God with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength and all that's in me. Examine your heart right now. Tell me, have you been on your face? Have you given God time every day now? Are you seeking Him at all? Are you crying out to Him? Are you praying and seeking God that He'll give you revelation of Himself? Are you seeking Him? Here's your prophetic word from heaven. If you seek me, you'll find me. If you continue forsaking me, I will forsake you. Right now you set your heart 